Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Hey, 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 welcome back to the Larry X is Ill show. Hey, I miss you guys. I know some of you guys kind of dropping out on me there because I'm not doing the every Thursday show right now. And we're going to look at into that further in the future, perhaps the first of the year. I don't know, but right now I've been doing a lot of traveling, as a lot of you guys know, spent a lot of time out there on the road. And so we had to kind of cut the show. I uh, didn't want to half do a show and not be here and be here. And so, but really, I, I've got received some wonderful emails and text messages from you guys that you're still supporting me. And we're doing the first Thursday of every uh, month now. And what that does actually is some good news and better news and great news in, 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 in that whole mix. Number one, I miss you guys. I got to say that now. I miss being on air every Thursday. But you know, time changed, things move forward. But in the process, a lot of stuff happens between shows. I can tell you. But first of all, oh man, I got to send my prayers out to Houston and Texas and all of the all of the chaos that's going on down there. And and I want to say something to you guys about that is that um, the 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 this is going to be a long-term disaster. This is not going to be a week or two disaster. And for the, and for for many of you that feels that this is going to be taken care of over the next few weeks or next next few months, no, 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 no. I just want to tell you, this is not going to be finished in your lifetime. Well, believe me, this is not going to be completed. In in if if this is completed in your lifetime, right now you're a newborn baby. Because you're not going to get to see that. Mm. But when the cameras leave and the news reporters leave and the lights go out from the media is where the pain is going to be just going to elevate. And don't turn your back on the people because the media is not there. Don't forget the people and their needs and their suffering because you don't see them on TV. This would be, and I know social media is going to uh, do keep up some of the, the televised or information to flow in uh, from ground up. But a lot of the times, unfortunately, here in America, we get fatigue. We get bored with the same thing over and over again. So we start flipping the channels. And I get that. I get that. But do the best you can with, uh, with whatever you have to give. You know, if you got a nickel to give, then give the nickel. Don't just give it because the news media is there. And many of you can go down. Many of us are going to go down there. I'm doing the best I can to see what I can do physically to help, uh, spiritually to help, and sending a few little nickels and dimes that I can put uh, together, um, helping and contact some of the radio stations if you don't know who to send information to. Radio stations uh, in the areas are good resources of what's going on in the community because most of the radio stations are community driven. Uh, picking the organization of your choice, you know, I, I get that. Buying product of your choice, I get that. So I I uh, trust that we as human beings and uh, you know family members of this earth, regardless of what our political side of this matter is race, creed, color, religion. Right now, people are suffering. They're going to be suffering for a long time. And I called some friends of mine, and and I warned them ahead of time that be very aware of the toxins that's going to be in, this, in these areas. There's going to be airborne disease. There's going to be um, all kind of illness that's going to be coming from this polluted water. 
And and I was saying to somebody uh, a few days ago, and, and and I'm not talking about the pain and suffering. I'm not talking about the damage. I'm, but to me, this is old Yakes now. I'm looking at the planet and call it global warming, uh, climate change, whatever you want to call it. But the universe or the earth dumped millions and millions of gallons of water on this earth. But you know what scares me the most? It was all fresh water until it hit the ground where human beings are living. What in the hell is wrong with us that millions and millions of gallons of water come out of the sky? And I know that it did damage. I know that homes are destroyed. But think of what this implies about our civilization, that that much fresh water hit the earth, and the minute it got into our communities, it was contaminated. We can't use a drop of it. You think about that. Now, moving on, let's talk about Little D a little bit. Uh, that's our president. Uh, you know, <laughs> and pretty much everything that we have talked about on this show uh, is just true about this man. This man is really unfit to be president. And this thing of saber rattling, rattling with uh, Kim Young un of North Korea. And I want to tell you guys something. Now, this is, now I'm coming from Larry the talk show to Uncle Larry now. I'm, 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 I'm Uncle Larry. Don't think that these people are stupid enough to go in there and start a war with a nuclear power. That's just, I could be wrong. I know I could be wrong. But guys, you're being bullshitted again. This is just bullshit. You see, Clinton had an opportunity to do something as he thought, but what happened was Clinton knew that North Korea was going to have nuclear capabilities and he was not gonna be the American president that say we got to accept North Korea as a nuclear power. George Bush come in, that was eight years. George Bush come in, Junior, for eight years. He peeped over in North Korea and said, access of evil, but uh, guess what? America didn't rush up in there, you know why? Because he has nuclear capabilities. And no president of America wanted to be able to say, ah, we can't do anything about it, we got to have them at the table. I love my brother Barack Obama, same thing. He was not gonna be the president that say to the American people, we got to tolerate North Korea with nuclear capabilities. But now with this idiot running off at the mouth, saber rattling, now he's forcing their hands that they're going to have to say to the world, well, Kim Jong-un is not the biggest fool as we thought he was because he got nuclear capabilities. And all of this I'm saying to you people, you may as well get ready for it. You're going to have to sit down and talk to North Korea as a nuclear power. That's all this saber rattling is about. They're trying to figure out how to give it to you with a teaspoon because you can't handle the raw meat that they really want to give you. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, but you know what? Uh, I got a young man here, and I, I generally don't read off anything, but, uh, yeah, but, but, but I like this. Uh, uh, but it's uh, Jerry J uh, uh, Jamont. You got it. And Jerry Jamont, man, uh, this is a this this is a heavyweight musician, bass player, and you know what? You know your boy Larry is a bass player too, and Jerry would like to get in on some of this conversation that I'm having too. So I don't want to burn up the whole hour by talking and rattling by myself here. But this man has played with uh, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, uh, Nina Simone. On and on and on. This is a th this man and has has a, a Grammy winner. I mean, you're talking about a powerhouse in the house, and we here at the Larry Exesia Show is so lucky to have such a talented young man. And also, he's gonna talk to us about some of this solar energy kind of stuff that he's been dabbling in. So, Jared, thank you, man, for coming to the Larry Exesia Show. My pleasure, my pleasure, my brother. And it was so. Um 
good to hear you, you rap on the things that are really relevant to the world. You know, I can't, I'm from the music world, but about humanity itself. Mm. You know, and what we're experiencing now is karma coming down, all that rain. Yes. It, it reflects the consciousness of the people on the planet. Come on, it's been now, going tell on us about for a, that. a long time. You know, the rise of Nazism and America's um, white privilege going on in this country for the last 50 years under the cover, and now they have a dog whistler up there blowing whistles. And D, yes. talking about Chump. Little, little, little Chump, little, little D. Ch- little Chump. You know, they're coming out. They're coming out of the woodwork. Well, see, the one thing I will I, I ch- I push back just a little bit on, I think Reagan did dog whistles. Mm-hmm. But I think Trump is just... He's blowing a horn. He's just blowing a horn. <laughs> <laughs> he's you know, Gable. You know, he's Gable for the he's, Satan. He's got the 18-wheeler backed up. Come on, y'all, get on board. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, he, but but tell us about that. That, that That's very... Um, I really like the way you stated that that that, that this is the the weather and and, and, and the, the it's, it's karmic related um, to the the, the the humanity. You know, we're connected to the heavens, mm. and maybe within ourselves we have the stars and the moons. We're connected, and when we go astray and we try to hurt each other, disrespect each other, this is the response mm-hmm. that we get, and we that from out of supposedly nowhere, but it reflects the consciousness of the people that are on the planet. Not all the people, but collectively, this has been going on a long time. It has, and, you and know, it's been um, orchestrated. And, and 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 to that connection from the cosmic to the cosmic energy to uh, America. I mean, to the Earth. I'm sorry, not just America, but the Earth, the the universe, and how we as humanity and human beings fit in it. There is a vibration that is in order when we when we are spiritually aligned. With the Earth, the Sun, the Moon, and the universe that gave birth to uh, our solar system, so but when our uh, when our spirit is so warped and our energy is so out of balance, the mm-hmm. word balance, then you see the Earth kick in and to set it back in order. Yeah, is that what you're saying as well? It's not so much just setting it back in order, but responding to what's going on, and we mm-hmm. have a chance to change. You know, it's been, it's been going on, it's so deeply rooted. And America in particular is really um, like the um, the, the uh, melting pot mm-hmm. for the world in a sense. Um, so you have all these um, organizations, um, you have the government, um, you have, um, the, you mentioned the pollution and the water hitting the mm-hmm. earth and the toxins, all these things, um, like the water that we drink, has fluoride in it mm-hmm. with things that are going to dumb down our immune system. So if something like this happens, it's catastrophic because we can't handle it. Our immune systems have gone out. Childhood diabetes, dementia. I mean, 50 years ago, this wasn't happening. This is very true because yeah. uh, it's so funny you say that because I specialize in working with uh, patients with dementia and Alzheimer's. And mm-hmm. you're yeah. absolutely right. Yes, I am. Right. Uh, I, um, and I have seen it proliferate out of control over the, I mean, I've seen it in the last 20 years. Yeah, exactly. Just, what is that? What do I, It's the water. It's the, it's, the, it's the water that we drink, the fluoride in the water. That's the main thing. In Europe, they don't allow fluoridated water. In no country in Europe, they allow it. Only here, they make sure it's in the system. So we get, it weakens our immune system, so we have to depend upon drugs, pharmaceutical drugs. We have to depend upon food that's full of, Things, um, uh, not on bioflavonoids. Um, um, things that prevent. Um, they put they inject the animals with um, all the different hormones, hormones, and, growth, and, and, growth hormones. Yes, and antibi- oh, and antibiotics. antibiotics. That's yeah. the main thing because now you take so many antibiotics that when you have a problem, the antibiotics you're taking don't work because you're already full of them. Exactly, you, the, the body's developing an immune, uh, immunity against that. Exactly. I, I, and to see that our food is contaminated, that our water is contaminated, and our air is contaminated. So how can we not be, uh, be coming down with all of these different just, diseases and dementia, uh, asthma is just running crazy mm-hmm. now. Uh, diabetes is out of control where you have children now that are born with, with yes. type, what is type one, type two? Type two. Type two diabetes now. Yeah. And that is, it's, it's, it's remarkable. 
It's all, um, you know, it's like I have a um, on my website, if you look at jerryjamontin.com at the bottom, it says human livestock. I wrote a dissertation on it many years ago about the food, the water, the um, incarceration rate, the um, big agra, the pharmaceutical companies, and the fact that they put in all these plants and um, um, disadvantaged neighborhoods, mm-hmm. all your recycling plants, all these things, and the, the aluminum cookware that we go out when we eat, or every time we eat outside, they use aluminum cookware. That is yeah. the industry standard. And then knowing this since 1929, how harmful it is for people that have been digesting this over a period of time. So this is why it's not just one thing. Yeah, It's like, you know, you make a fist, you got five fingers, four fingers and a thumb. Yes. They come together. Okay. And that's what happens. This is what's happening. And I'm talking right in this case where you're looking like really 10, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my two hands coming together on the chokehold. It's what we're up against. Well, when you look at what do you think about then and I, I, uh, I can guess what you think, but I want to hear your words. When you look at, and it's mainly the Republican Party, and I know that both I'm a liberal-minded and, and I'm a Democrat from, from, from history, Mm-hmm. But I'm mainly a liberal minded, so I know that there's there's rot on both ends. But uh, the, at least the Democrats tried to put some oversight on some of the chemical companies, some of the of the environment. Uh, what do you think about this president is going through and just taking away all of the oversight from that has to do with food, water, air, soil? What do you think about that? Well, you know, it's almost like he's a an agent for another country. You know, it's like oh, he's a, call, uh, call Russia. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It comes down to that, and people that pl- are placed to get in the way. You know, he's in the way of progress. He's meant to stifle progress and to make sure this to push this evolution that we're going through with the um, climate change, um, the human livestock, what we've turned into, um, being debilitated. Um, He's part of that. He's part of that equation, and we have allowed this to happen. People didn't go out and vote. Okay, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. They said no, this is not going to happen. They didn't vote. Exactly. So you have this going on where people are distracted. They they believe so much in what is not. I believe in cause and effect. Okay, if you do something, you're going to expect a response. So if you're going to make a change, you have to you know, raise your voice. And people didn't do this this last election. They no, think they it was, didn't. It was, he thought it was a joke. In fact, he didn't. He thought it was a joke also. He didn't. He didn't, he didn't think, think he was going to win. win. <laughs> he no, didn't, he didn't. You know, and I and I tell you something, Jerry. I, I I I and I finally came away came up with a way to explain Donald Trump t- for me and a few other people. Kind of like the analysis is that you and I we don't have to show a law degree to go and put our name on a ballot to run for a district judge. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do that. You mm-hmm. can put your name up there and you pay the fees. Mm-hmm. But you get there and now you win. And now you are sitting in court and you didn't I didn't finish high school. But now I'm sitting yeah. behind a judge's bench and now the lawyers come in. What the hell do I know? Not a, not a damn thing. And that's what we have. That's what we have in Donald Trump. We got a third grade of his president. He does not a know the third language. Third grade mentality. Nobody, who, uh, nobody who, the schools he went to, nobody remembers him. No. Nobody remembers him. He never attended class. Okay. Nobody yeah. was in his, nobody remembers being him being in that class. Okay. Now I can remember at least 10 people from elementary <laughs> school, you know, junior high school and high school, you know, in college. Nobody but, remembers but, him. But, but you know, one of the things when you, when you were talking about the, the, the dog whistle and the racism and stuff. And one of the things that I have um, looked at, and I, this is what I believe, you see, uh, you have the Asian communities, you have the Hispanic communities, but the big, uh, the big spiritual battle in America is basically white men against black people, and the rest can, if the if yeah. if the Hispanics would duck. And just stay out of it. That'd be okay. If the Asians, you see them, they're quiet because they say, "No, this battle ain't about me." The mm-hmm. Asians are smart enough to know that this is not about them right, right now. Mm-hmm. This is about white people, white men wanting to really emasculate the growth of black men. And let's just call it what it is. It, exactly. But one of the things that I see has happened is you see a an erosion 
of white superiority and the erosion in uh, black male inferiority. Mm -hmm. So we are no longer feeling inferior anymore. Mm -hmm. That's eroding. Mm -hmm. White males are no longer feeling superior, superior. Mm -hmm. anymore. That's eroding. And that is where you're starting to see some of the panic from them starting to set in. Because whether we, we are the only people that don't pay close attention, and I'm saying this to my brothers mm -hmm. and sisters here, we are the only people that don't pay, pay close attention to our own growth. We're too busy criticizing each other for what we're not doing, and we're not focusing in on what we are doing. And, man, I grew up in Mississippi in those cotton fields. Believe me, you're traveling at warp speed <laughs> at growth in the black community. Don't let nobody tell you you're not. Because if you wasn't, they wouldn't have to try to take away your vote. If you weren't growing, they wouldn't have to ride the streets, mm -hmm. burning crosses, and with these little cups on the end of sticks. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a part of the fear that you see the white males in. You know, I don't, let me just say this. Uh, when you go to, and they feel that they're losing their women to you, man. They've been. They you have know? been. So you, you have that, in, that superiority falling away. And boy, and let's just call it what it is. When they saw that black family, uh, the president of the United States and his mm -hmm. wife and, and his, his kids, mm -hmm. and that much power and showing what a family should be, not just a black family, but showing what a family can mm -hmm. do, but just so happened the image of a family in America has now fallen on the the glory of this black couple. And that has pissed a lot of people off. But indeed. Everything Obama he wants to get rid of. Gotta Everything. get rid of it. Gotta get rid of it. You know, that's his whole that's his whole it's so it's so irritating to him. That's all he can think about. He's consumed by hate. When you get consumed by hate, you're gonna lose. Yeah. Because I, you can't you can't think straight. So we have to control him and make sure that he doesn't get what he wants, basically. It's gonna be up to the Congress and Senate to really come together, hey listen, we gotta lose Cannon here. Yes. Okay, we got, we're gonna have to do something about him. See what they thought they could they, do with him, they, they thought, you know. Well they got, they, you know, not to cut you off. No, but, please, you know, go ahead. You know, J JFK, he was um, assassinated, we know that. Yeah. We know, you know, they, they have many, many, many theories on it, but basically, he was gonna do things that they didn't like being done. Was, yeah, and they got rid of him. Exactly. Now and, and, and and then when you go back, look at how many people was assassinated back in those days. Oh yeah, yeah. There was assassination all over the planet, and uh, America's hand was involved, involved in many of those assassination of leaders because they weren't doing what America wanted. Exactly. Them to do. Economic hitmen. They go in there and disrupt the economy of different countries. Well, when you the, you look at them, they. Uh, Go back to Kim Young Un. Well, one of the reasons Kim Young Un is not being wiped out of the planet because he have nuclear yeah. capability. Mm -hmm. If he didn't have that, he'd already be gone. Yep. But now they sent in inspectors to a rat. They went all under Hussein's bed and his roof <laughs> of his house. <laughs> They gave him colonoscopies, looking for <laughs> yeah, weapons yeah, of yeah. mass dis destruction. Uh -huh. And the minute they found out he didn't have now mm -hmm. when they thought he had them, mm -hmm. they stood out there on the, on them desert a long time before they went up in there. Mm -hmm. Say, well, no, we're not gonna. We he got to get rid of those weapons of mass destruction. That's right. But once they out. went in, and proved that he didn't have them. It was all over. That's when they went in there to get him. And that's why they had the inspectors in there. They didn't have the inspectors in there for peace. They had the inspectors in there to prove that he didn't have those weapons, and if he ain't got them, we're going to wipe him out. And that's what they did. Exactly. And did the same thing with Libya. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and so the, 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 next, uh, the, the next one on the, on the block over there that no one is saying anything about is Iran. Well, Iran got nukes now. Yeah. They're not going to rush over there. Mm -hmm. That's so, true. That's true. Yeah, they're not gonna rush mm -hmm. over there. But the thing about it, once again, no American president want to be the one that say, "I'm sorry to tell you, 
these people that we've labeled as idiots. They ain't. They ain't idiots no more. <laughs> so, you know, we and, and like you said, the karma of this country has given us so much, and it has so much potential. But what is so sad is that it's still just waddling in evil. You know. the, the basic, you know, when you hit the nail on the head, when you said the basic thing was black and white, you know, um, we're in a situation in the black community where like, we've been like crabs in a barrel, mm -hmm. trying to fight, you know, kicking each other, stepping on one other to get out. And this is because, you know, because, because of they've been, it's been institutionalized. Um, slavery is in different forms, you know, still continues in many different ways. The mind, the body, you know, the... Um, the visions that we have based upon what we've seen, the bling bling. Yeah. You know, we have, you know, our aspirations have been, you know, changed. We, we're the only country, only uh, a culture that has very little contact with our actual roots. You know, we look at Africa as being like, you know, one big mass. And one of the, they don't talk about the 268 countries that are, on yeah. the, that are on the continent, you know, the different languages that are spoken, you know, um, so it's um, we don't have connect, we don't have a connection with that. We have a, a, that's what yeah, we have well, here. Well, and if we're not, I, you know, here again, one can look when you look at it from that standpoint. One of the, for some of my white friends that is watching the show and viewing, and I thank you guys. So I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable, and nor do I want my black audience feel uncomfortable. But as I'm gonna have to tell the truth as I see it. Um, see, we are a man. We are a country without a flag. We are a nation within a nation. Mm -hmm. And with this, and I've said on this show many times, if a Mexican go and find a new land somewhere, he's going to raise an, a Mexican flag. Mm -hmm. If a Asian, uh, Chinese, or Japanese find a new land, he's going to raise a Japanese or Chinese flag. Here's the Negro. If he find a new land, he's going to go over there and raise an American, American flag. flag. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, and, and then people look at and That's, don't understand how messed up that is in in a person's mind. When you take something away, you take your roots away. This is what happens. You know? Yeah, and this was it was planned. Um, have you been to Goree Island or Senegal? Oh, they would no. take they would take us from from the from Africa to South America and back. Oh, to yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes. we have no yeah. idea where we are. No, no idea. And you're out in the middle of the ocean on this little island. There's one way out. And you have chalk infested waters, okay? I've been over there, and you can hear the chains rattling. I mean, no, I didn't make that pilgrimage yet. Well, it's yeah. something that it's something. It's something to do. It's something to something to do on your list, and we don't have the. Um, they did this systematically to get us to disenfranchise us from our own cultural roots. I think for me, and and here again, now I'm for the. Please don't. Well, you can send me some 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 nasty emails. Yeah, I like well, I all mean, emails. The you know, change is not always comfortable. Yeah, but what I'm, what but what I'm gonna say is, whether it's working for you or not, that's I'm not criticizing this, folks. Just 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 look at me now. Sometimes <laughs> what we deal with is in a circle about this big, and so we spend Hello. our life in this circle right here. Mm -hmm. So I want you to I want you to know this before I say what I'm gonna say. Because I know how sensitive some of you, my folks is, especially those in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Texas. Hello. But one of the when they took the shackles off your ankles, they wrapped that Bible around your head, mm -hmm. and that has been one of the most crippling, <sighs> crippling devices that they have used to keep us from knowing who we are. Well, now I doubt. now notice I didn't say that there was not good stuff in the Bible, folks. I am just saying the way it was used on, it wasn't used, it was used against us. Mm -hmm. And we are finding our way through it. We are navigating through it. and But the way we were taught the Bible really damaged us and the way Christianity damaged us as uh, descendants of slaves. And I just, you take it or leave it, um, I, I really don't care, but all you gotta do is do a little bit of research. There. It's, so, it's, so, yeah, it's so true, it's so true. I mean, um, when you, in fact, the fact, when you remember, realize that it was written 100 years after Jesus Christ was in this time, it's all, a lot of it's heresy. 
Yes. And it took a lot of African, the whole story of the um, nativity. That's an African proverb, basically. Yes. So it's a lot of, you know, fallacy in there. The good things about it, you know, don't kill, don't steal, don't take another man's wife, and things like that. Oh, that's good stuff. It's common sense, cause and effect. But like you said, exactly, it's been used as an anchor against us. That's weighing yeah, us, weighing us down. Yeah, you know, the, the things that I'm talking about in there as well, and I love that there's some beautiful information in there. Yes. And there's some very valuable. And I wouldn't be where I am today uh, as a human being uh, if I didn't, uh, coming out of South, if there was not for Christianity. But mm-hmm. that old turn the other cheek kind of stuff and <laughs> that was taught to us, and some of that is still in us when it comes down to old master, you mm-hmm. know, we we jump down each other's throat and snap in a minute. But we look at old master, then we mm-hmm. get kind of okay. Well, you know, uh, he's bad, but <laughs> and we got that old uh, beat me master, but don't yeah. sell me. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, and then that that brings yeah. us to um, where the 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 new slave is the prison systems and then the police department look at what the exactly. police department. Tell exactly tell us about the mentality of the police department they are there to keep us in control and we have been put, we they criminalize used to criminalize us okay the um, proliferation of drugs in the community that they enforce um, look at the old days in bootlegging. The, the sheriff ran was the biggest biggest bootleg biggest bootlegging okay it was the sheriff yeah same thing holds true today with drugs. Okay, they're putting they're putting them where they want to put them. Um, it's leading to incarceration, taking families out of homes, putting the power upstate where, because they have a, a population of prisoners, their population increases. They have more funding, better roads as a result of this. And meanwhile, in the community they come from, you have a family without a father, without a role model, without a, a, um, a provider. So it's, it's things just to this basically this suck the life of out of. Life of, of you know, I'm, out really, of us. I'm really happy that you came on this show that we can just talk about what's going on. Because right. I thought we was going to be talking about music, and then uh, this man coming, I'm just enjoying. I feel like I'm sitting down talking about talking to my brother about what's going on in the world. Well, this is true. And this is and this is this is good dialogue, it's you know. A, um, it's a beautiful thing to just let it, you know, to be let it let it out. You yeah. Know, basically, and like you're talking about dementia, and, and um, this is something that I've been working on. Um, all my life. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Tell I me. suffered from, t- from TBI, traumatic brain injury. Oh, okay. Since the age of three. You 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 suffered from that condition. Yeah. Now, is that a, a birth or is that? A- uh, you know, it's um, it's an accident. You know, if you have an accident, you have brain is rattled, and in pre um, early childhood, um, TBI is um, very. Um, you know, I've lived with it, and I'm talking about it more now. So I'm being open with it. I never even thought about it. It's part of the reason why I won two Grammys. Oh, okay. Okay, because I had to find a different way of doing things. I couldn't do things the regular way. I, I, would, could, would, would it be too invasive to tell us what kind of accident you were in? Um, no, I tried it um, tumbling down the basement stairs at the age of three, then doing it again at the age of five, and remembering, oh, this happened before. Oh. I had forgotten about it. <laughs> oh, know? my goodness. You see, you, you lose your memory, and you live in a world of confusion and doubt, and then you want to find a way to escape, you know, basically. And this goes on to, like, it goes into a, a pattern of your life. And so your life is a little bit, you know, different. You know, you're always on paranoia in a sense. Um, you realize you have limited capabilities, but still you have desires to do things. So you have your whole being is basically... Um, guided by what you're able to do, okay? You Since can, you've been conscious of this particular injury because you had it yourself, have you seen a a growth in dementia in your lifetime? Um, as I've gotten older, it revert, it, reverts, it reverts to um, a lot of the things that um, I had when I was in childhood. Um, but fortunately, I've been working so hard to, um, to strengthen the brain. The brain comes from having the brain being active. Okay. And so what I deal with dementia by cross-referencing. Fortunately, I went into music, and I was able to use my abilities through music. Where, 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 you, where were you born and raised? In New York, in the Bronx. Oh, you're uh, East Coasting, huh? Oh, yeah. But yeah. I spent the last, I spent from 2007 to 2013 in, in, in originally Mississippi. Where? <laughs> What are you doing in my country, man? 
<laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. My family did civil rights work. My sister and uh, her husband, um, Bob Moses, um, they were um, part of the um, voter registration in uh, Mississippi in the, in the 60s. And so they got involved mm. with some stuff down there. And I went down there to help them out um, oh, okay. um, the last um, decade. Um, so that's how I ended up down there. So when you when you talk about brain injury, uh, do you talk to young people uh, that's getting into football and or uh, is there a coalition? In oh, definitely. You, and in, in fact, it's so it's, it's even beyond football. Um, any whiplash, okay, you've been in a car accident where your head, your brain goes back and your head goes back mm-hmm. and forth. You there? You just you got this like a hit in a pothole. You hit enough potholes, you know, and finally you get a big one, and all of a sudden you got a, you need a, a new a new rim, a mm-hmm. new tire. Um, fortunately, that doesn't happen all the time. But meanwhile, you have these little these little um, events that happen. They will lead to a stroke later. They will lead to early dementia, because what happens when those neurons are broken? I just found this out by listening to TED talks. Mm-hmm. They did a little animation, and when the neurons are broken, they emit toxins that poison that part of the brain. Mm. So it's not just break, a breaking a connection. You're actually infecting the rest of the brain. But the brain is a miraculous um, an organ. It, can, it, heals, um, it heals itself. It can be yeah, to a degree. It, it is when, 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 when there is an interruption with the neuron transmitters, and, and I think uh, actually when signals are being sent through a neuron transmitter, mm-hmm. then there's, uh, it releases uh, a fluid called, uh, I think it's sodium ion. Okay. And with sodium ion is, 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 is a neutron, electrons that come together, and they are the one that cause the, f- the electrical charge in your brain that sends the message to cause the synaptic gap through mm-hmm. the myon sheet. Mm-hmm. So when you have something to interrupt that, then the whole system is thrown off. And even the sodium ion that causes the, the, the releases X amount of fluid is not, it's no, it's no longer uh, balanced. So everything starts to fall off balance. It's, so more, tox- it's re- 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 it, more toxic. It's, it's the toxin that releases. This is what, um, it's actually, this is new information they didn't notice before. It was just a, was just a break in communication. Mm-hmm. But that break, what comes out of those where it's broken are toxins. Yes. That affect the rest of the brain, yeah. that part of the brain. Because everything is chemical. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everything is chemical. That chemical, electric, electrical. Electrical charges. And exactly. Stuff like That's that. what we are. So I don't want to get too technical <laughs> here. You know? Hey, like, you know. But you, you, ran it, you ran it down. You got to do it better than I do. I uh, mean, that's you do. I mean, I, you work with people with dementia. I haven't had the, um, the, the, um, the good fortune to be able to um, work with people one on one or in a group. Um, I would be going to Costa Rica um, to do a workshop. Um, next year on my um, music workshop and I found that that Costa Rica is the number one country for human development in the really? world. Wow. And in, in what sense? Number one in the world. Costa Rica and South America. Wow. Well look here. Tell me how music let's say use the phrase would you say save you? Oh save without you? a doubt. How did, how did music save you? It gave me something to live for. I mean, I was walking around, you know, blind with the, you know, the, the last head injury I had, I was 10, I got hit by a car, two flights, hit me t- two stories up, came down on my head. That was it. I was oh gone, that was totally gone at that point. In fact, I lived across the street from the armory, and I always look at the soldiers that would be hanging around there that were shell-shocked. It always felt some kind of connection with them. Mm-hmm. This is when I was like, I was five, you know, at the age of five, one up, when I was being more aware after the second one, and I always felt that like, you know, a connection with them. Even though I went to school, I thought I should be in like the CRMD class, and I didn't feel, you know, comfortable. But I had a high reading level. No, oh, okay. I could read like on the first level of college when I was ten years old, and like, and, you know, so I could, comprehension was there. I always was able to comprehend what I saw. Um, that changed my life also. And I'm not going to tell you all the details because there's going to be in my autobiography, which I'm writing well, now. You're going to come back on it? You're going to come back here and, and talk about the... I can do that when the book yeah, is out. But I, is all out. these things I'm talking about, the little details about yeah. what, what I was able to comprehend at an early age and how it affected my life dealing with all the injuries at the same time. And um, music saved my life. It gave me something to say, I can do this. I wanted to do mm-hmm. something for the first time. I was like basically shell-shocked from the age of three up until the age of 
11 until I started playing music. And then at the age of 12, I started working. So if I'm hearing you correctly that, you know, uh, even for those who are getting older in age, because I tell all of my clients and friends and relatives this, number one, uh, you have to get beyond just claiming uh, your memory loss. That's right. You, you know, you got to, you got to, st- Stop claiming it as much as you can because, you know, then we get into this. I tell my friends mm-hmm. all the time, I sit around there, well, they, I'm having a senior moment. I said, no, you need to, you, you're training your brain because one thing about your brain, it can be trained oh, to the, not remember. That's right. It really can. You yes. can oh, train yeah. your brain not to brain remember. Will, oh, oh, uh, brain will train you to train yourself to remember. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, and because I know I program myself, I don't remember people's name. I got an, I, some people say I got nearly a photographic memory. So I can remember. You can recall them. Oh, I can recall charts from biology, science mm-hmm. to wow. uh, uh, astrology. You, you know, test me. I can mm-hmm. remember the, I, I, can, I can see the charts. But when someone comes and asks me, my, asks me somebody's name, I'm not going to remember the name. <laughs> but I know that I program myself to not relative remember. information yeah mm-hmm. so my point is and i tell my friends and stuff what i believe and i've seen to work is that uh stay busy keep your brain busy learn Most something new, new. Mm-hmm. learn something new and i am working with a group of uh, wonderful people in my life and and my partner what's up <laughs> and we're all constantly, we're constantly learning stuff. So I'm in class, I'm learning, I'm always reading something, and and I'm super duper dyslexic. So, and, but uh, I, I like it's just about keeping your brain busy. You well, know? I got something for you. Yeah, I got something for you. Color sound music. Color sound music. It's been around for three thousand years. Pythagoras, Pythagoras brought it up, and he uses the rainbow colors. Mm-hmm. Um, Red. The notes have a color to the notes. Exactly. Yes. But they've been yeah. relegated to only seven notes. Oh, they have been. Yes, that's the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, and the violet. The key of C, if you're thinking about music. All the white keys on the piano, if you look at it that way. Uh-huh. So what I did, I added the black keys on the piano. So now you have what we would call accidental. So you have 12 notes, which makes it possible for you to play in every key. And to be able to able to reference every key as opposed to just one key and all its seven modes. Okay, this is what we have had for three thousand years. And um, a great friend of mine, Herb Lavelle, he came up with the idea that we should partake, pursue this 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 line of um, creativity because people were just being so focused on being by themselves in one room on. In different rooms with different TVs, different everybody was separated. So he thought this would be a way to bring people back together on one screen in one room, playing, making music on one screen um, together. Call the sound music, making things fit. You know, that doesn't go good, Daddy. That 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 brown yeah. don't work with that pink. You know. Oh, okay. okay? You know, yeah. let me put some. Put, try orange. You know. Yeah. You know, so you it's, it's 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 a game, but it's also a learning system. But it makes you cross reference. It keeps the brain active in terms of what it is, what you're seeing, and making it relevant. So if you see a color red, you'll find that there's, call, there's songs in that key of red. Okay. Okay, there's songs in the key of gold. There's songs in the key of silver. There's, calls, there's songs in the key of turquoise. And when you see those colors, you hear that song, and you have something to keep the mind busy, basically. Is that something, those color uh, systems, is that something that can help young people with math? Um, it's been said that music is good for math. I heard, I've uses, heard that. It's, it's music, but I never really get that 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 correlation. Mm. For instance, I would just say count backwards from fifteen odd mm. numbers. What would you do? Uh, freeze. Look <laughs> 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 at Java's laugh at me over there. <laughs> you know, I said count backwards. You know, and, you know odd numbers from mm. from fifteen down. Is it, would that, be, it would be every, yeah, it'd be every other number. Oh, okay. Basically, mm-hmm. I look at the numbers that way in terms of being patterns. Um, the same thing with even uh, even numbers. Every other number, I tell my students, this don't think. Just go with every other number: 15, no. 13, 11, 9, 7, 5, 3, 1. Okay, it just comes out because I'm not thinking about it. I'm just doing what it is. I know what it is. You just scared me because I, you know, I'm just <laughs> I, I couldn't keep up with you. 
But the one thing, uh, the one thing that I have uh, that uh, that helps me, I believe. No, I can't say I believe that have strengthened me a little bit. Is that I I I, uh, I read and write Hebrew, mm. and because I read and write Hebrews from right to to left, and it has been a fascinating journey for me, because I'm not learning. I haven't learned the Hebrew language mm-hmm. as fast as I would like to, but. I can read the words and 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 I know every letter, and that has strengthened my ability to look at a piece of paper and read. Mm. Now, mm-hmm. you know, so that that has been a fascinating journey for me. That's amazing, learning another language and not speaking it, just being able to read it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it it's, it's pretty fascinating. <clears throat> Hebrew, the reason Hebrew, you can learn so much in Hebrew, because every letter in Hebrew has a a meaning, not just a sound. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then every letter in Hebrew has a numer- n- numerical value to it. So you you can a person can look at a Hebrew a word in Hebrew, and that word is telling a story. Mm. So even mm. if you don't know what the word means, and you can't use it in a language or in in, in a mm-hmm. sentence at that point in mm-hmm. time. You can still look at it and say, "Oh, this is what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. This is this is the, the 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 message that's in the word." Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's that's been a fascinating. It is fascinating. Journey. I can't believe this. I mean, this hour's almost up. When you're having fun, man, we were having time fun. Flies. You know, because <laughs> normally, you know, you guys know normally we'll have a topic and we'll be set on a topic, but my brother here, he's gonna be back here. We're gonna do this again. We're just sitting back here chit-chatting and talking about the world events and stuff, man. I really, really want to appreciate you, uh, Jerry, for coming here, man. This is this has been a short, brief, but a pleasurable uh, uh, sit-down today. And, and you got to promise promise me you're going to come back and, and chat with me. I definitely will. I'm looking forward to it. And your audience, um, going from where you're coming from and what you talk about, you know, this is what I'm about. You know, it's more, you're an activist, you know. Yeah. And you're out there doing things, and maybe not, you know, and make it in public, but you have a program where you're able to do these things, enlighten people. What we like to do here is, uh, I have a voice with this. This gives me a voice. Mm-hmm. And but what I also like to do is to take my voice and 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 give it to others, you and share the that. voice. You've and done that. so when I put that microphone in you in front of you, you have a voice now, and whatever you decide to talk about or uh, put some positive energy out there because we don't do negative here. We don't do salacious. We don't do silliness. We get silly. I get <laughs> silly. But you know what I mean. We don't do all of that crazy uh, stuff. We try to sit down and have intelligent conversation. And I really have enjoyed this intelligent conversation with you today. Well, thank you for so having me. So before we close, Jerry, give us, i like the guests to give us just a word. We got about two minutes, job. Give, give us a good words of wisdom in closing and to the audience. Well, you know, a lot of things that we have learned culturally, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Respect yourself, respect others, um, cause and effect. These are the things that we have to, you know, think about. You know, have a goal and have things in line with your goal. And you can see positive things result as a result of having things in line with your goal as opposed to being sidetracked. And you will be sidetracked because when you get a goal, that's when things start to happen. This person's out here making noise. Let's shut them down. This is what the reality of it is. The neck, the good against the bad, hot and cold. You know, the hottest, hottest, part, hottest part in the house is where the air conditioner is, okay, when the air is coming in. So expect that, but stay on point. You know, have a goal. And have plans to reach your goal and have things in line with the goal. This is my words that would help you, you know, forever. Always have a goal. I I, I, I love that. I'm I'm checking the time <clears throat> once again. <clears throat> One minute because I really have enjoyed this. And uh, what I like to say is that we talked about being in line both spiritually, mentally, and physically. Uh, whether you call it God, creation, or um, uh, intelligent design, something greater than who <laughs> we are gave us this opportunity to experience this thing that we call life. 
and when we, as we have experienced this life, then we're obligated to seek a balance with that that gave us this glorious thing <clears throat> that's called life. It is up to us to seek a balance and figure out how to get in line with the universe, with the earth, with the sun, and as it is moving and orbiting through this thing that we call our solar system. This is us inside, as Jerry spoke earlier. It's inside us and it's outside of us. And my thing is I believe we can find that alignment by coming to peace with who we are, but yet being helpful to others. Reach out and help somebody uh, unselfishly. And remember, this is Larry Ixazil's show, A Nation Can Rise No Higher Than It Elevates Its Woman. Peace. We'll see you next first Thursday next May I add gratitude? Gratitude. Yes, sir. <laughs>